Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife Melissa and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald and this is Curiosity Inc. Hey guys and welcome back to today's episode. The other day I went over to a lady's house and as you know with the shop sometimes things come in and sometimes I go out to look for things. Well yesterday a very nice lady came in. She said um, she had some items she was looking to sell. It was an estate situation. They had to get rid of everything. Um, so I went over last night. I bought an entire room of stuff. Not really entirely sure what I bought. Sometimes you just make an offer because you see a couple key pieces. Um, they are dropping all off here within minutes. <laughs> We're going to go through together and see what is out of this estate. So it's kind of like uh, Storage Wars without, you know, too much risk, I guess, because I'm pretty sure there's already a few cool pieces, but let's find out together. Okay, we just finished unloading everything out of the car. It is a pile of stuff. Um, when I went to the house, there was a couple things I saw sitting on top and I knew it was going to be a good pile. So uh, pretty much bought everything. Hopefully this pans out, we'll see. So among other things, I'll come back to this in a second. One of the reasons why I bought that whole collection is that I went in the basement and this Edison Amberola, I think this is an Amberola 30, was sitting right on top of the pile of stuff that was um, in the, you know, they didn't want it or it was going to go to charity or wherever. It was on its way out the door. Um, so I bought everything because I knew that this is a good machine and um, I haven't played around with it too much. Now, to start a gramophone like this, typically you, you want to give it a few cranks. You don't want to overwind it or wind it too tight so you don't want to do any damage to the spring. Um, this is the start switch and you can see it starts moving. But as I was fiddling with this, I noticed that it's spinning kind of slow and you can kind of see it's not turning very quickly. The problem with that is that as soon as you lower the needle down, which is right here, it sounds like a horror movie um, and will terrify you and give you nightmares. Um, it's meant to go quite a bit faster. So the spring either doesn't have enough tension or the oil um, uh, has you know, gotten cold from, from it sitting outdoors because they had it in their car overnight as they were bringing it in. Um, so we're gonna let this kind of warm up a little bit and see if maybe that works better. But it is a neat machine and it does have potential. I mean, it's working and moving. It's just not playing at the right speed. Uh, so we'll see if with the adjustments in that, that uh, we can make it work better. This is sort of a nice decorative globe. Now, it has the look and feel of one that might be mid-century, a Blue Ocean's globe, but it's actually probably a lot more modern. And the way you can tell how old the globe is, is by looking to see what Russia or the Eastern European countries are labeled as. So this is labeled as Russia. If it was USSR, you'd know it'd be a little bit earlier. Even though this globe is probably from the 1980s or 90s, um, could even be a more contemporary piece than that. But judging from when the fellow passed, I'd say it's a little older it's still worth at least a couple hundred dollars. So um, it's gonna have a nice home in the shop and I think it looks really cool too. So not everything has to be antique, just has to be cool. I can see some of this is a little bit newer than what I normally buy. And I remember when these were super popular, yeah, 1991, 1992, that is the era that I collected these in. Um, they mass produced the heck out of these Pro Set and Upper Deck back at that time. People were buying them and clearly saving them thinking they'd be, you know, the retirement fund and they didn't end up being. These sets are very, very common and, and as a result, not worth a whole lot of money. That said, sealed boxes like this are still pretty collectible. I mean, heck, they haven't been opened in over 20 years, so there's something going for it right there. Um, given enough time, hey, maybe they'll even increase in value a bit more. But it looks like I've got quite the nice little stack of unopened early 90s hockey cards. Not something I normally sell at the shop, and I'll debate whether to take these to auction. This might be the sort of thing I just auction off. This bin's going to be easy to go through because it's see-through. I know exactly what this is. This is a variety of different Edison um, gramophone reels for that player that I bought. Yeah, Amberol Records. And of course, it says on the top here who the artist and what the song is. There's certain ones that are worth more than others. Like if you find early blues, um, they can actually be a bit more collectible. I had one that was about a, a guy driving his Model A Ford. That was pretty cool. Um, so they are worth looking up individually to see what, what uh, song you have. Just like any record, the better the music, the, the better the value. Um, so we will dig through that later on see what we have but that's a nice selection of them there's got to be two four six eight ten ten twenty thirty forty fifty sixty probably sixty or seventy at least of these um reels in there so 
if you average out that they're worth like, you know, five bucks a piece or something like that, five, ten dollars a piece on average, that's, you know, good return on our investment. This one, a couple of action figures. And from what I understand, this person works sort of in the movie or film industry, so they ended up getting posters and promotional booklets. So this is from 2004, Doc Ock, and of course Spider-Man. So, you know, still in the package, still cool. You know, 15 year old action figures, and there are lots of collectors for Spider-Man. He's one of the most iconic and most popular of the uh, action heroes that's out there. So that's good score. And uh, speaking of good scores, it looks like I've got quite the assortment of score rookie and traded sets and there's more boxes that looks like a box of football cards down there lots of sports collectibles and expansion packs and things like that that back in the early 90s these were um these were probably expensive like this thing back in 1991 was probably like a 40 or 50 dollar expansion set it's probably not worth even a fraction of that now probably like 10 bucks or, or less if you can get it so somebody spent a lot of money on this collection that did not pay back in the ways that you would hope. But again, it's inventory. Uh, I mean, it's mine now. So what you get when you buy boxes of stuff, you don't really know what you're getting. Could be worse. You know, could have been a box of old used toothpicks or something. Um, yeah, so select 94 football. I'll go through these in a bit more detail later and see which ones are worth money, which aren't. But that's so far I'm getting a little collection of cards. Okay, bin number two. This one's got a little bit of weight to it. It is, oh, well, at least it's not old early 90s hockey cards. It's something different. Complete Idiot's Guide to Elvis. Elvis Encyclopedia. Elvis Commemorative Edition. Someone was an Elvis fan. And Elvis is still pretty popular. Look, Elvis Christmas ornament. Rock your Christmas tree. There's, looks like VHS still sealed. This is what, you know, I know people collect and I know you collect for a lot of reasons. It kind of, you know, at the end of the day, I kind of wish the guy would have just had a chance to watch his videos. I mean, he left them sealed because he wanted them to be a collector's item, but you never get a chance to actually enjoy your stuff. Now he's passed on and never had a chance to watch those. Um, but, you know, if this made him happy, I guess that's what it's all about. Elvis Presley Wine, Jailhouse Rock Merlot. Oh, that's kind of neat. A lot of Elvis books in here. Okay, I gotta start bringing some of this stuff out so I can see what else is in here. Looks like, let's see. Graceland Interactive Pop-Up Tour. Oh, this ought to be fun. Oh yeah. There we go. It's a pop-up Graceland book. I wonder if they sell this there. I always thought pop-up books were really cool when I was a kid. Admittedly, they're still pretty cool now. I like getting those Christmas cards sometimes in their pop-up card. Let's see, what does this turn into? Oh, that's Elvis's Kitchen. Yeah, it's like an interactive Graceland, so you can feel as though you're right there. Boy, that's 1970s for you. Harvest Gold Fridge, Elvis. That was the style. And the media room, three TVs. I can't remember if it was Elvis <laughs> or Hunter S. Thompson or both that used to shoot their television sets. Home studio, this is cool. I have to admit, this is pretty neat. I I'm kind of digging this pop-up book. I have no idea what the thing is worth. I mean, I don't know if they're still making it or not. This would be kind of an expensive thing to make. It was 40 bucks US when it was new. So if that thing is still in production, I imagine it's at least $40. But uh, you go through the books and you see what these things add up to. Um, and they're all in great shape, so I'm sure I'll have no problem selling them. Let's see. Oh, what's this? Elvis Treasures. Contains never before published removable documents, memorabilia, and so forth. Well, I see. This is kind of cool. So you get a replica of letters that were written by Elvis. You get a replica of Elvis's wallet with his social security card. I guess if you want to go and, I wonder if you could cross the border. Hey, uh, I need into Mexico real bad. And then that's what you present as your ID. 
Um, some, yeah, I guess this is like Elvis's personal stuff and they've replicated it and sold it as a gift pack. And this wasn't cheap. $75 here in Canada when this was new back in 2002. So in today's dollars, that's like 7,500. No, it's not that bad. It'd still probably be about a hundred bucks though. Uh, some of this stuff I'll have to look up and see what it's worth. I'm not up to speed with my Elvis collectibles because frankly, I've never had these things in before. So um, I guess we'll, we'll price them and put them out and look them up online and see what they're kind of going for. But that's a pretty cool box of Elvis stuff. Well, that would explain the vast amount of Elvis Presley records that I got. Um, he was an Elvis fan. So this one's sealed 1970s copy. That's pretty cool. It's nice to find them when they're still in nice condition. Some calendars and just lots and lots of Elvis. These are, you know, kind of common, the later 70s ones, but there's still people like it. I prefer his, the stuff he did when he was on Sun. The earlier, you know, the Elvis. This is odd. It looks like a, a Russian, perhaps, or, you know, Belkanton. Oh, made in Bulgaria. There we go. A Bulgarian Elvis record. Well, kind of cool. Sealed original. And then randomly Arlo Guthrie, which I actually really like Arlo Guthrie. And uh, Beatles, their BBC sessions. I recognize this. Yeah, live at BBC. I had this on cassette. Not to date myself, but I remember having this on cassette back in the day, 1994, when I was just a young punk. Okay, bin number three. Got some weight to this one. Oh, probably no surprise, more Elvis, but these are giant, po well, these are posters. They look like they're giant stamps. All exactly, the same. there's like a huge selection of these exact same Elvis poster stamps. Some are dry mounted. Uh, hmm. Let's see, where did these come from? Monterey Pass, Monterey Park, California, 1992. U.S. Postal Service. I have, you must have had a whole case of these things. Is that all that's in here? Let's see. Oh, it was a Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> oh, that's Toy Story 2. Okay. Well, that's going back a ways. And it looks like there's a Sully in there. Yeah, there's some toys and some non-sport cards. That's, you know... Pretty neat Coca-Cola stuff. All right, I'm gonna dig these out and see what I got. Toy Story 2 flight control. Pick them up and fly them. Well, that's called using your imagination, but that's cool. It's still in the original package. This has gotta be from the first release. They've been making these Buzz Lightyear's ever since pretty well that first movie. Well, it was since this movie came around. And then we've got the glowing bedtime Sully. Kind of neat, still in the plastic and everything. So I'm sure those who like Monsters, Inc. Or if you're a John Goodman fan, you never know. Let's see. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. Little, looks like a sort of a music post, poster for <laughs> music and performance by Vanilla Ice. Well, nothing dates a movie more than saying that Vanilla Ice is doing your soundtrack for you. Ice, ice, baby. Um, yeah, so Ninja Turtles movie poster. There's some random little cards so these must be out of the monsters inc guy and then all these coca-cola collector card boxes just tons of the same exact box i guess you know if you want to collect a whole set you'd probably have to buy a couple boxes but not that many i didn't realize well i know coke makes a lot of stuff and in fact coke merchandises their stuff more than pepsi probably like a hundred times more common than finding pepsi or orange crush or anything like that you find coke stuff but yeah, it's kind of neat, actually. These would probably, because they're not related to sports or time frame like that, they'll probably still sell. So I'll put these out for sale in the store. Someone will come in and probably want to buy a box of, you know, Coca-Cola cards still in the package like that from the early 90s. I think they'd think that's pretty neat. Yeah. Two decks of playing cards and a Coke tin. This is all good stuff for with Christmas coming up right away here. It's all good, sellable stuff. And I just noticed this one Coca-Cola Sprint <laughs> prepaid phone because it must be European phone card <laughs> guaranteed in every pack. Um, I wonder if that thing is still good. Like if $25 in prepaid minutes from 20 years ago, that should get you like $150 worth of minutes now you'd think. But I wonder if they would still honor that. That's crazy. Weird promotion to put a phone card in with trading cards for Coca-Cola. But hey, I guess you cross promote where you can.
This was a nice surprise. The Flight Control Buzz Lightyear guy, he's worth about $80 to $100. And the glowing bedtime Sully in the original package is probably about 40 or so. And I'm talking Canadian funds here. But that's a nice find to, to check that out at the bottom of a box. So I'm going to price these guys, put them up on a shelf. Well, there's not too many more boxes left. So probably not a whole lot more Elvis, I wouldn't think. Still have that kind of cooler shaped box to go through, these little guys and this. Um, I'll start by moving these over to the counter and we'll check and see what these are. I'm guessing they're some kind of collector plate from the foam packaging. They look like those Franklin Minter plates. We'll, we'll take them over and have a look. I like that they're marked heirloom. Like this is what you're going to hand down to your kids. Well, you might, you never know. Hey, that's pretty cool actually. It is a plate, but uh, let's see. Oh, it is for Franklin Mint. See, I knew I recognized. They always pack their stuff in this kind of foam. Franklin Mint Coca-Cola tray is what that is. It looks like an old Coke tray, but it's a plate. 1997. That's kind of neat. Coke Santa is always pretty classic. I guess you could use these as plates. They're meant more for displaying, but that makes a fun little collection. So I've got probably a whole nice little set of them there. Cool beans. This box is open so I can see it's Christmas ornaments, but they're the old glass style. And uh, those have become a bit more fashionable lately as people want to have more of the uh, old school Christmas vibe going on in their house. So even old Christmas ornaments can be pretty collectible. Now the ones that are shapes um, like reindeer or Christmas or, or snowman, um, Christmas trees or snowman, those ones are probably worth a little bit more. So I'm going to hopefully dig through here and see if there's uh, some of the figural ones in the box. Right now I'm seeing a bunch of the basics, but still pretty neat stuff we'll dig through. Judging from the boxes and the fact it was only $1.27 for the whole box, uh, on sale, nonetheless, from $1.49, uh, this is probably from the 50s or 60s, I would say. I'm going to set that guy over there, find a spot for it. These things are actually pretty fragile. Incidentally, while I'm standing here, I also got these little Coca-Cola Christmas displays, little figural displays too, out of this collection. See, that one's got the inset kind of detail. Most of these are just the regular sort of balls. There's some other slightly fancier ones in there. This one, oh. Compliments of your Phillips 66 dealer. Looks like, oh, it's, it's a, I think it's a key holder. You put that on your wall and then you hang your keys in there. I believe that's what that is. Those are definitely screw holes. It would hang like that. And the only thing I could think you would need would be something to hang your keys through. But maybe I'm wrong. Or tools, maybe screwdrivers. I don't know. You guys watching at home probably know, but... Phillips 66, little promotional item there. That's kind of neat. We don't have those stations around here anymore. And this is Phillips 66. Oh, it's money bag. That's where you put your loot. Um, this was, uh, yeah, actually I heard this, the gentleman this came from, it said that his dad worked at a Phillips 66 station. So that explains it. Uh, nothing inside though, <laughs> but that's pretty neat. And then uh, just a bunch of ornaments in here. Gold balls and always telephone insulators in a box. No matter where you go, there's telephone insulators. These are the, um, uh, the little light backers you put behind your Christmas bulbs to make them shine more brightly. They're kind of like a tin. You guys might recognize those from days gone by. And uh, what's more Christmassy than having a, having a little ammo belt <laughs> in with your stuff? So military surplus in there too, but let's take this box out and have a look. Okay, yeah, more old school glass style ornaments. Okay, here's one, this is what I'm talking about. The ones that are shaped have a little bit more value than the ones that are just plain round um, or concave. A nice little set, you know? Might even find a spot to hang these up around the shop here somewhere. As we are getting close to Christmas time, they'll probably do some kind of decorating. Neat little things, it's a nice little collection. Last little assortment of stuff. Now they put this stuff here for me. Um, we're gonna see exactly what this is. Looks like a picture of some kind here. Let's see. Oh, it's pins. And I recognize that bear. These are the, that's 1988 Calgary Winter Olympics, which of course Calgary is a, a city not too far from here. 
So they made 1,988 sets, obviously, for the year 1988. This is numbered 1,955, one of the last. But there's a whole set of the pins, nicely framed. Flags of the Nation series. At one point during the Olympics, these things were pretty expensive. I have no idea what they're selling for now, but I will probably after I look it up and see what they go for. But, you know, nice little uh, remnant of the Olympics that were uh, here in our wonderful province back in the 80s. My Aunt Carrie was one of the uh, flag bearers, one of the people that was participating in the Olympics. So that's a pretty cool piece of our family history too. I got a couple replica uh, gold and silver records from Elvis. That is pretty cool. The other one, uh, this this is actually 24 karat gold plated, that one. So those should have no trouble selling at all. There's lots of Elvis fans still out there. And this is a cool piece to have up on your wall. So pretty sure those will go really quick. And I flipped this over and check this out. It's a whole box set of replica historic US medals. So we've got sheriffs and police. That is so, so cool. Uh, it's even got this neat little embossed glass with the pistols. Looks like Colts probably going together there. It's a neat item. Nice little wooden case. Looks like it hangs up on the wall. Oh yeah, that'll be a nice Christmas gift for someone. Okay, now that, that stuff's cleared off, I can see the old radio a little bit better. Colster Radio, I'm not overly familiar with this brand, but it seems to me like it's the style that flips. Yeah, there we go. It's not gonna work with these tubes out. I don't know if those got knocked out from them moving it. It was on its back. You gotta be so careful when you move these things, but you know, I, I'm happy that they brought it to me, but hopefully nothing got damaged in there. It looks like I've got a lot of extra tubes. This is an old machine. Look, and you had to have your own engineering license to operate your radio, 1935, 36 Department of Marine Radio Branch. Better get your license if you turn on your radio folks nowadays. So get the tube plugged back in there. Well, I don't think this one's going to work anytime soon because it's a style that uh, hooks up to a battery. You'd have to get to a conversion on it. So it'll be a decorative piece, but uh, I mean, you could convert it to make it work, but really it'll probably just end up sitting there looking cool just as it is. Got a stack of these. I believe these are promotional brochures that were given out to promote Star Wars Episode One when it came out. Everybody was so excited for that movie to come out. It was the first Star Wars we were going to see in a long time. Uh, and then they introduced this guy. <laughs> and and uh, people were like, nah. And that wasn't far in. You know, the first five minutes of the movie, you know, you're like, okay, all right. Uh, Obi-Wan, that's great. That's super cool. And then, and then Jar Jar enters the scene. And you're like, yeah, I'm pretty well kind of over this movie. But, you know, uh, still a part of Star Wars history. And I have just a ton of these things. It's kind of a shame it's not from, I don't want to say it, a good Star Wars movie. You know, I guess it's not that bad. Darth Maul was in it, but still, you know, um, they got to be worth, you know, at least 10, 20 bucks a piece. I'll have to check them out. I have no idea. I'm, I'm saying this price because that's what I figured they're worth. Don't know right now. Final bin. It is... Looks like posters. But posters of what? Or from what? See if I can open this up. Oh, well, that's obviously Superman. So these are probably, you can see how it's reversed backwards. This is, I see Mission Impossible. These are uh, movie posters that would have been in the light box. And these all look like movie posters, in fact. So maybe there's some cool ones in here. I don't know. Uh, dig through these guys and see exactly what's in here. I guess that's all you need to do when you're advertising Superman. You see that logo, you know something's coming. So that must be from one of the, let's see, 2006 it said. So returns 2006. So these might be from that kind of era. Oh, Gremlins though, that's an older one. Okay, I gotta unfurl some of these, unroll them and see what there is. A lot of these posters look like they're from the 90s or kind of early 2000s. There's a Roger Rabbit one here, which is kind of cool actually. It's um, do you guys remember Roger Rabbit? Um, and I was looking at one of my other favorite movies, Back to the Future, 1, 2, and 3. I kind of didn't like 2 as much as I liked 1 and 3, but it's a good series. And uh, yeah, nice to get a good original backlit poster. And th there's got to be 50, 60 posters in here. 
Yeah, it's the original Disney movie poster for Beauty and the Beast. I'm sure there's got to be somebody out there who'd want that. That's a pretty interesting item. Everybody likes the Disney musical cartoons. And yeah, it's just a really good selection of old posters in here. I'm pretty pleased. Iconic Tom Hanks. There's Forrest Gump. A lot of good classic movies. I've just about got my counters all cleared up. I had that giant sock display over there show up um, yesterday, so I was frantically putting all those boxes away. Um, had a couple items of clothing show up for our good friend Hans, who I'm going to be seeing on the weekend here. And uh, somebody, you know, it's funny because a lot of times you might see me opening a box with my scissors because that's handy and I know where they are. You never seem to find a box cutter. So what did somebody send me? A box cutter! And not only did I get a box cutter in the mail from one of you uh, viewers out there, they gave me a label that you must have a sense of humor. I'm guessing you do, because it even says property of Alex right on it. So, <laughs> uh, you know, the only one thing that they don't think about when they package these things is that you need scissors to open the package to get to your box cutter. So uh, I once bought scissors that were sealed like this and I couldn't get them open because I needed scissors in the first place. Anyway, I think I had to find somebody that had some. Um, I have one last thing that I got from this estate that I haven't showed you guys. Actually, a couple last things to show you. But so far, I'm really pleased with the amount of variety and um, the amount of good sellable sort of Christmassy items that I picked up. But there's one thing that I wanted, uh, and that was um, a really cool old guitar. Now, as you guys know, I play guitar myself, and I love to buy old instruments. And so when I saw this one sitting there in the uh, giveaway for free pile that she had, I had to make an offer on it because I knew it was cool. It is an early Dobro style resonator guitar. And now I did not recognize the name because it says ideal on it with an R. Now there's only a few different types of brands of resonator back then. There was National and then there was Regal and the guys that invented the Dobro kind of split off and started. Um, as it turns out in the 1930s during the depression, National um, Guitar who made the, the Dobro, the resonator that we see here, they licensed this guitar to several other companies. Um, you could get a Gretsch, you could get all sorts of things. And if you had a store or a shop and you wanted it to be called an ideal, well, they'd send you kind of a blank headstock, you put whatever you want on it. So they just really needed the sale. So they'd sell to whoever. So what I have here is an authentic circa 1930 to 34 uh, National Dobro resonator guitar in outstanding original condition. I even had the case that the thing came with and it's a real unusual one that slides out the bottom really neat couple of artifacts and happy to have it in my collection with the other guitars here at the shop. It's just a super cool piece and really the main reason why I bought this whole collection to begin with. Uh, really wanted to get that guitar. Well I finally got everything all squared away and the store is just done in the nick of time because it is closing time. Pretty good haul but I have to say my favorite item by far is probably that Dobro guitar. Second up would be the old Edison uh, gramophone behind me. Really good collection of items and I'm glad that I took the risk on it. Well, it wasn't so much a risk. I saw the guitar and that were in the pile. Um, so we ended up making some good profit on the deal. Fun day, uh, definitely exhausting day. So I'm looking forward to going home, having dinner with the family. Thank you guys so much for watching today's episode. Make sure to tune in for more adventures as we go through items and find cool stuff. Um, really appreciate you guys watching the program. Uh, and we'll see you all soon. Bye for now.